All right, guys, welcome back to 2024. And the first vid is gonna be of our new beast here behind us. So this year, Beck and I are working with Lotus and this is the new 2024. It's the 20th anniversary Lotus Trooper. It's a 22 footer. It's an off the shelf build with a couple of little tweaks from us. So I'm gonna give you a quick walk around, show you what's involved, and then uh, we'll jump inside and have a quick chat and Beck can show you the inside as well. But as with all walk arounds, what I do, I start from the front and I'll just work my way around. If I forget anything, I'll come back to it. And if you've got any questions, pop them down in the comments below, happy to get back to you. But here we go. This is the new look. So from what you can see here, it's a bit of a beast, isn't it? It's a full off-road Lotus Trooper with a big off-grid battery system inside. Uh, Cruise Master suspension as usual. Let's get into it. So starting up the front, uh, Cruise Master DO45 hitches are standard on the new Lotus fans. So this means it can take up to a four and a half ton caravan behind it on the hitch. I'll give you a bit of a recap on the Cruise Master is they are a full off-road articulating hitch. So the knuckle spins or the whole hitch spins and it also goes this way as well. So they're super smooth for towing and they're very safe. So if you ever do roll your van, your hitch is gonna roll. It's not gonna pull your car over with it. Uh, the handbrake is integral as part of the hitch uh, and they bolt directly to this extended chassis. Now the chassis on the Lotus is a GNS chassis and it is fully galvanized. All right, so that means it's gonna be very rust proofed and um, protected for doing off-road and beach work and things like that. Uh, swing back here, you have got the option to go from a standard jockey wheel to a boss jockey wheel, which means you can put a special fitting in here and just bang it up with a drill. Uh, you're not standing here whining like this, because especially on these big heavy like off-road vans, they can have a lot of ball weight. So having this boss hitch just goes up and down, no dramas. I'll show you. Now look, I can't condone this, you're not supposed to use impact guns, but I don't have a drill that's working at the moment. So I've got my hitch in here, and watch how fast it goes down. So that's, like I said, that's not condoned by um, anyone to use impact guns on those things. But anyway, that's probably why, because you get the thing stuck in there. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> Don't do that at home. Stone guard up the front. I'll show you a couple of uh, things that we use too, um, some of our own products as well throughout this walk around vid. So on the stone guard, we've got our stone guard buddies. So these are some extra storage. They're made from a waterproof PVC now with buckles on the back of them. And you can put them on the front or the back of your stone guard, depending on where you've got the storage room. I like them on the back. And then inside, they're just extra storage for things like I've got a shovel, I've got my hitch buddy, a couple of spare covers. And the other one over here, I'll quickly show you. I keep my like electrical lead and my impact socket in there and also a heap of hex pegs and that. So they just live on there. So it's good just for extra storage for things that you use all the time or dirty stuff, or you can use them for bins as well. So you can run, uh, recycle and put your empty stubbies and stuff in them. Uh, this one here is our floor mat. So we've got a big navigator floor buddy in there and it's also got its own bag that you put it in and I just sit it in there. It never goes anywhere, never did on the last rig either. And then you can just whip it off, run your awning mat out. Twin nine kilo gas bottles in front of the big toolbox here. So I'll start on this side. Uh, it comes with a generator slide in one side and I've, on the other side, I've opted to put uh, the barbecue slide in this one. So pull him out. The Weber comes out here and there is a gas bayonet attachment up under the front there. Plenty of storage in there, huge box. Um, you also got a top shelf for like longer items that goes all the way through. We put our chairs on both sides so you can whip them out. Give the kids a job when you're there. Uh, let's keep going down this side, eh? We'll do the back side first. At the top, you'll probably notice um, there's a part of the 20th anniversary is it's got a, a couple of extra treats uh, in for aesthetics and for like the looks of the van. The first one up the front here is an integral sort of housing for your a solar panel. I'll show you a top shot. Uh, I've got five 200 watt solar panels up there from Red Arc and then it also houses that big light bar or work light on the front. So that's good for setting up camp and for security as well. So you can always light it up if you hear anything outside of a night time. Uh, you can't really see it, but on top also is the Dometic dust reduction. Like this is all comes as standard on the troopers. Uh, come down. This one here, like I said, they can have a generator slide in them. I just use it for storage, bulk storage for extra gear. Got chairs, tables, um, awning side screens, all that. You can never have enough storage. Tunnel boot that goes all the way through. You look in here, there's a couple of lights in there. Swing it all the way through. I've got our um, Starlink. This is a pretty cool thing I'll show you. There's more to do with Starlink on this van too, but this is our Starlink bag from Navigator. So it houses all your components in there for your Starlink. And while I'm talking about that, quickly come down here and have a look at this. 
ever seen one of these before? All these vans come standard um, Starlink ready. So hang on, let me unscrew this. Look at that. That means you can plug your Starlink satellite straight into that. And then on the inside under the seat, there's a, um, a GPO or a power socket. You can plug your modem in there. And that way you're not running the cable for your satellite through a window or door and jamming it up, that sort of thing. So that's pretty handy and pretty cool. I can't wait to use that. Uh, TV antenna, if you are pulled up somewhere with an external antenna, you can wire that in. And something we've never had before is instant hot water. This one I'll show you on the inside, but it's an instantaneous gas hot water, which means there's no holding tank. So as soon as you hit the, gas, the hot tap inside, it fires up and hot water comes out. We did do a test the other day because people have told us uh, it takes a little while for the water to come through. So we tested it and it took a litre of water before the hot come through. But also got told you can put a diverter valve in, which um, I'm going to do. And I'll show you that in another vid. But that recycles the cold until it gets hot so you don't waste any water. Uh, there's lights on both sides, um, nice bright LEDs. They're colour changing as well. On the Lotus, you have got a sail track up the top. So if you're going to pull up somewhere uh, for a long time in hot weather, you can run an extra shade screen in that sail track off your uh, non-awning side to give you more shade and stuff. Um, come, keep coming down. We've got um, our lounge room windows, another light, a big fridge inside. Our um, Dometic 220 litre compressor fridge is inside. Same fridge as we've had in the last few vans. They're a killer fridge, really good on power, uh, and they only run on 12 volt and 240 volt. But I'll show you that on the inside. External shower, and then you've got your AC mains input and your breakers there. So they plug in. This one we've retained just the um, standard cassette toilet. It's a Dometic version, this one. We usually run a Thetford one, but this new um, Dometic one has a bigger canister and a ceramic bowl on the inside. So we've got, um, we've optioned the SOG to have on it because we reckon that's really good. That's just a filter that when you open the flap, a fan pumps all the air out of your dunny out through this charcoal filter so you don't get as much smell on the inside. Really good thing, we've used them before. So um, yeah, we've got it again. And if you're wondering what this is, that's your fridge drain. So any condensation that comes out of the fridge trips out of here. Let's have a look at wheels and tyres. Uh, these are standard. Lotus have their own high performance alloy rims uh, and they do come with good tyres normally. Uh, I think they run Coopers but we have used the Toyo Open Countries for the last few years. I think from my experience they are the quietest best mileage tyre that we've run as an all-terrain. So I'm sticking with those. I've got them on the car, the boat uh, and the caravan. I reckon they're mint. Uh, there's a 12 volt socket here too, either side of the van. There's one here, I'll show the other one. You can run um, an air compressor to pump tyres up or, which I've got this cool little water filtration set up I'm going to show you in another vid. I can power that up from there as well. Right, let's keep going around the back. I'll show you quickly under here. There is four heavy duty stop drop down stabilizer legs on every corner. Uh, and you just jam your socket on them and wind them up and down. These are another little cool product from Navigator. They're just a leg buddy, protects them from stone chips and dust and all that sort of thing. I'll tell you what though, we hardly ever put our legs down, eh? I don't know. I think it's because the airbag suspension, we normally just dump the bags on the stops and it doesn't really rock around too much. So unless we're set up for a while, uh, we hardly ever drop the legs. While we're here, let's have a look at the, the water manifold. So you probably notice down the side, there's no water filler caps. Now they all run through this manifold here with a couple of taps. So you've got on our 22 foot trooper, we have two 95 litre water tanks and a 50 litre freshwater drinking um, tank. So there's two pumps inside and you can also isolate uh, the two water tanks, the two 95 litre tanks front and back. And then you've got one uh, connection here is for mains water. So if you're on a caravan park, you can plug your hose straight in. It also has a grey water tank at the back, so you can just shut the valve and divert all your grey water into that. Righto, let's come around the back. On the back, you've got a big galvanised rear bar with an integral, or you've got two jerry can holders in it. I use it for storing my wastewater hose and on the other side for um, storing my drinking water hose. But there's also a big firewood carrying basketing there, big mesh basket. You can opt for double spares if you want, but we've never had, had like one flat ever in so long on the road. So we just run the one spare. All our um, wheels are same um, stud pattern offset as the Cruiser, so they're interchangeable. This one on the back is the Navigator bin bag. Uh, I'll show you a handy little tip. You grab a, a Bunnings bin, chuck it in there. Keeps it nice and full and it makes it easy to get all your, your tins and rubbish out. Tell you, we use that so much eh, on the road because like, you go through so much rubbish as a family that like 
in between campsites, so that's chockers, and the next time you fill up with fuel, chuck it all in. Uh, another feature of the 20th anniversary is this cool wing on the back. Now, I know every user are all gonna ask me what function does it perform. I, I don't think it's gonna help with um, downward stabilization at high speeds. I think it's just, um, George, the owner of Lotus, is right into his drag cars and performance cars. I think it sort of stems from a bit of that background and to make it just look a bit cool. And it also, um, well, at the back, it houses your clearance lights and your rear work light as well. So I call that rear spoiler. It's just a, a little bit of uh, fancy stuff to make your van look pretty cool. And then uh, reverse camera there. Uh, it's a wireless one, which comes with a kit. I've never used a reverse camera on a caravan, but I will, um, might give this one a go because you, you don't have to wire anything extra into your trailer plug. All right, my um, water hose goes in this side uh, in the other jerry can holder. You can obviously take these off and opt for whatever you want on there. And then swing around the front side. So this, the, one of the layout's been a bit flipped um, compared to what we normally had. We've, the kids have always been on the other side, but this van, the, uh, the bunks are down this side. They run lengthways like this, and they've got their window in there. I'll show you on the inside. They're running a new uh, brand awning that I haven't used before, but we've done a shakedown trip in this van, and we've pulled it out and tested it and stuff. And I think it's on par with the quality of the Dometic ones we've always had. So this is a global brand. Uh, everything seems really good quality. So I'm a bit of a fan of this one. Um, this thing, if you've watched my vids before, I've been chasing a, a drop down table that isn't keyed for ages. So I'm pretty happy with that. Look, no keys needed because you can never find the damn key. So anyway, that, that's pretty cool. And then you've got a, an outlet there for running an induction cooker outside or air fryer or whatever 240 volt appliance you want to do. Here's that other 12 volt socket for powering up um, pumps and whatever else to do your tires. Fusion stereo system, you've got an outdoor speaker, you've got indoor speakers and you've got a head unit and also an entertainment system here to run your TV, your fusion controls, uh, power there. And you've also got USB-C and USB power sockets. And this one, it's pretty cool. You can run, if you've got a TV that can do it, you can run your audio signal from your TV through these cables and it links through to your fusion system. So you can have like surround sound on your telly. Cause I know before we've used our telly outside to try and watch sporting events. And if it's a bit loud or if it's raining or something, you can't hear the damn TV. But if you're gonna run it through the speakers, it'd be sick, you'd be able to pump it up. Uh, this little hatch here is your airbag control hatch. So this has, I'll show you underneath in a second, it's Cruise Master ATX uh, disc brake level four. So they have different levels of um, how it's controlled. Now this one is, uh, it's got auto ride height leveling, okay? So I'll show you what this means. I've got it dumped on the bags at the moment. So if you step back a bit and show this here, babe, when I hit auto, it'll automatically take me to ride height. So up she goes. The compressor will probably kick in once it runs out of um, air in the tank. And this will take you straight up to your traveling height. And then once it reaches that, you flick it back to manual and you're good to go. There you go. So that stops. That's it. Um, it's travel height set up for you. Now you go back to manual. You can turn the compressor off and away you go. Now, if you do want to adjust it to level yourself out at sites and that, you flick these switches up to manual. Then you've got left and right. You've got up and down. So all you have to do, you can bag down on either side or you can bag up and that'll level your van for you. Happy days. And there's also a line out here so you can run an air compressor and pump your tyres up if you want. So we've had uh, the ATX on our last couple of vans and it is, it's, it's a game changer. <laughs> if you want to use that word, like once you've had it, it's like so easy for setup and towing and off-roading. It's, it's a pretty cool product. All right, um, aluminium pull-out step. This helps. This van's pretty high, so we do carry an extra little step as well just to make it easier to get in and out. Uh, and then you've got an entry-level um, handle here and a new style door. So this one is an Aussie traveler door. Now, I'm still trying to learn how to use it. Hang on a second, there we go. So it does separate, and you've got a midi screen and a security mesh on this, and it's also triple lock. So you've got one, two, three, and a, a blind to pull down on the inside for extra um, privacy and to make it nice and dark in the morning. But what it does, I'll show you, I like the style of it. You shut the door, and then if you pull your latch one way, you watch the seal. So the triple locks all pull in like on a compression. So it puts compression on the seal and then it's all sort of tightened in. I like it. It seems like a real st sturdy um, dust proof door and then opening up that way. So anyway, that's a new 
new style door I've never had. Tunnel boot, outlet for your gas um, heater inside. We've got a Truma gas heater. They do the trick. We're um, doing some winter trips this year out west, so that'll come in very handy. And then we've got barbecue light and awning lights. They're all um, dimmable and color changing to amber. Let's talk about up top. This van has got like a full suite of Red Arc power gear in it. Some of it, I can't really go into too much info yet because it hasn't been released. It's like a next generation charging setup that will be coming out to the public in a few months, but it's pretty damn awesome. What I can tell you is it's got a thousand watts of solar on the top. It's got the Red Vision management system uh, and it's got 600 amps of lithium inside. So three 200 amp batteries all um, in parallel. And then it's got a wicked 3000 watt inverter and a big ass charger but I'll do a full off-grid power setup video for you later on. I'll grab this now and give you a quick look underneath at the suspension. So, ooh, it's pretty neat under here. All the water tanks are got um, galvanized covers on them for stone protection. And then my ATX is actually color-coded black. So normally it's been that tan color. And now you'll see that the trailing arms are all um, color-coded black. We'll swing in here, got big disc brakes on it. Got airbags here and big remote resi shocks. There's your air tank there, which supplies the air for your airbags. All right. Oh, one thing I'll do, I'll come over here. So what I mean when I talk about auto leveling is it has this device here. You've got this auto leveling switch that's mounted to your chassis and a rod that comes down to your trailing arm. And now this tells it what position it's in and what it needs to be for your travel. So when you hit that auto, it sets it for you. It's one of them, and there's one of them on that side as well. Right, eh? It's neat, eh? God, it's nice gear. And here's the back side of the airbags here. So you've got your big rolling sleeve airbag, big single shock here with remote resi. I love it. ATX is the go. All right, before I hand over to Becky to do the inside, I'll just, the biggest question I've had from a lot of people um, on social media since we've got this are asking if uh, Lotus make all aluminium frame vans now. So this one, the 2024, uh, they come out with an all aluminium frame. So I can tell you that and confirm that for you. All right, I'll hand you over to Beck. She'll show you the inside. Right on, Chuck, let's go. Hi guys, hope you remember me. I'm Beck. <laughs> I feel like I haven't done YouTube for ages, but come on in. So this is the, um, it's essentially sort of like the same layouts that we've had in previous vans before because we feel it works for us and it's kind of like what we're used to. But all right, we're gonna get straight onto the, we've got a queen size bed here, overheads for our clothes. We've also got shelving and storage in here as well. One of my favorite features is this mobile phone charger. So you just pop your phone on there and it charges, which I think is pretty nifty. Uh, we've just got a couple of pockets here, the Fusion, so I can basically, you know, I can start a doof doof party at 2 a.m. right from my bedside table. <laughs> While I'm here, I'm gonna quickly talk about my Van Chester. We bought out queen size a couple of months ago. Thank you already to the um, people who have supported it. Uh, but basically we've got a queen size Duna and then the rounded corners and a two in one sheet set. So it comes in three colors, charcoal, sage and rust. Justin will probably drop a link there if you wanna have a squiz. So up in the corner here, we have the fusion speakers and your, like I mentioned before, your control panel here. Sirocco fans, absolutely essential when you're traveling. We've got two of those and they can face either way, which is really handy. Um, over in the corner here, we have our Truma hot water system. No, so, what gas is it? heater. Oh, there you go, Truma gas heater. So we can control that from here. We've got our smart TV here, Netflix, YouTube, you name it. Um, super handy when you're traveling, especially if you've got Starlink and just play a Netflix episode, which I'm psyched about. Okay, so this is our Red Vision system. Justin will talk a little bit about that later. Come over to our lounge area. So we've got all our, this is like our bits and bobs sort of cupboard and then all of our food goes up here. So down the bottom here, we have our big long tan couch. Actually fits four of us here, which is really great. And then we just bring in a stool to sort of eat on the other side here for the five of us. You've got this table as well that sort of moves around. So it's really handy when we're in here. Um, now for the fridge, this is a... Dometic 220 litre compressor fridge. 220 litre. I just think it's ample. We lived as a family of five full time with one of these. So they're excellent. Can't fault it. Microwave. All the drawers down here. We've got all our cutlery. All our van dining. Um, under sink. Cupboard. 
more cupboards up the top here. This is another sort of control panel for the caravan. Um, another new addition we have is the induction cooktop. So normally we are gas lovers, but this is the like the 2024 layout. So we're super excited to see how that works with the battery systems and things, and we'll give you a bit of a rundown on that throughout the year. Uh, this time we've got an oven. So we haven't had an oven for years, so we're pretty excited to have that. The kids have been doing heaps of baking lately and not being full time anymore. We just didn't need the extra storage, but I just have this little bottom one here as well. Down here, if you're building a caravan, absolutely get a bin built in. You don't want your bags flying around the floor. That's just essential. We have a couple of cupboards here, more pantry food. I put all my cans and tuna and condiments and stuff in there. So that's really handy. And down to the beds. So we're stuck with the triple bunks on the one side here. We absolutely love it. While I'm here, I'm gonna to touch on my Van Chester. You can see it here. Again, thank you for the fantastic response on these. You guys are loving it, so thank you. We've got three Sirocco fans all in each of the bunks and they've just got like a little pocket down the end there to put any bits and bobs in. We have some really big cupboards down the back here too. So you can see we've got a lot of space for the kids to pop their clothes and things in and we normally just take games and pop my pegs and things up there. So it's a good little storage cupboard. This is our shower. We've got the beautiful brass and the fusion lock towel rail. So that just houses our floor mat. Nice big full length window, full length mirror here, which is great. Got this cupboard as well, which I love that it's behind the mirror. More storage down here. We've got our toilet. It's a Dometic toilet. It's a new one. It's got the ceramic bowl. So we'll see how that goes. I think I'm gonna like a ceramic bowl. So we've mounted our Kamek two and a half kilo washing machine here. This was an option that we changed in the 2024 20, layout. They normally have one down here, but we wanted this for space. Now we've got our concertina door. She's nice and sturdy, this one. And I think that's it. I hope you like it. We went with like, when I was chatting to Lotus, um, we were talking about colors and things, and I sort of said like, surprise me. And um, I just told them I'm sort of keen on like timber, whites and tans, and I think they did a really good job. So, and I'm loving the brass. The so, brass or gold? I'd call it gold. Oh, actually, is it gold? It looks gold to me. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, all right. Uh, I'll run you through a few things that Beck missed, eh? So it's mainly just the techie stuff that Beck isn't all around. So um, up above her right here is the Dometic. All right, that is our aircon. That is a new fresh jet model. So it's running at the moment. It's running all off our battery system. So it's uh, they're really good. They're an inverter style aircon. There's only probably two or three models on the market that can able to run off an off grid battery system with like a low enough current or that. But anyway, that's good. We've had those before. Here's your main fusion panel. So there's a couple of head units around the van to activate and to uh, control everything. One there, one beside Beck's area in bed and the other one outside. Now you also got a remote for your aircon and then you got more speakers up here. So you can sort of run surround sound in your van. You can put different zones on outside, inside, plug the telly into it with your audio cables and that sort of thing. So that's really good. Now don't think Beck pulled the cupboard up. I mean the bed up. So underneath you've got full underbed storage and then you've got your hot water system over there with also, you see a little monitor, looks like a smoke alarm. That is a gas monitor. So uh, if you've got any gas leaks and stuff, it goes off and beeps like a smoke alarm. Heaps of storage under there. Um, and what else have we got? We've also got smoke alarms as well, which is one above the bed. And we've just got a standard antenna for the TV. So a King Jack antenna that you just twizzle around and uh, search for channels and it works the goods. All right, so battery system, let's get into it. You can't see much because there's, did you know, there's new legislation now around um, battery systems, lithium battery systems in living areas and, com and confined spaces or enclosed spaces have to be sealed and exteriorly vented. Is that a word? Exteriorly? Externally, I guess. Uh, anyway, let's pull this off. This is our long leather. Slide him off. And then all the battery system lives underneath here. I'll just turn that off because it's buzzing at me. This is the only bit you can see. So if we pop this up, don't show them too much of that deck, I'll cover that. This is next generation charging stuff from Red Arc. So uh, all I can tell you is that it's like a kick-ass management charger, um, multiple inputs, outputs, 100 amp job evil. We'll get more into that soon. But um, pretty excited to give that a test and show you more. 
and then down this end is their um, 3000 watt pure sign inverter. Over this side, you'll see it says warning, this is all sealed. Now I did take that off and got some video of it to show you, but there is three uh, Red Arc batteries in there, they're 200 amp batteries linked in parallel, and they live under there with the vent going to the outside. Sweet, so that's it, it's pretty simple. Hey, you've got all that gear, and then you've just got these two things that run it. So no massive um, boards or complicated looking things. It's uh, It all sort of comes down into a couple of neat little units, and then it's all controlled by this jobby. So I'll grab this. This is the Red Vision management system or your control screen. All your 12 volt, 24 volt loads can be turned on and off through here. Your water pumps for your fresh water and your main water. And you've got water tank gauges in here as well. So one, two, three, and four, which means your drinking water, main water, and your gray water tanks. You can scroll sideways. You can uh, set your, your outputs. You can have a look at how many amps is coming in, how many amps you're using, how much solar is coming in, all this sort of stuff. And there's a really cool feature uh, with these new Red Vision systems is it's called a chargeback. So uh, what you can do, if you run the battery flat on your car, you can leave it your car hooked up via your Anderson plug, hit the chargeback sort of thing once you set it up, and it will actually put a charge back into your car battery so you can start your battery again. Pretty cool feature, eh? Lots of cool stuff coming with these, but I'll give you a full rundown, rundown in uh, a later vid. But anyway, you can turn all your lights on and off all through here on the touchpad. One, two, three, and then if you want to, best thing is just go 12 volt, boom, lights off, on, and then you turn your fridge on and off, go into travel mode, storage mode. Heaps of cool stuff, I like it. It's a great system. Now one thing, here we go, that Beck didn't show you. We've got instant hot water, which we talked about outside. Here's what you do, you just turn it on here, and then go up and down. You can only set it at 50, that's the maximum, because that's bloody hot. Uh, and then you can just control it here, and then as soon as you pull your, your hot tap down here, it just fires up. So the good thing being, like if you're on mains uh, water at a caravan park, you've got endless hot water showers for the missile on that. So you can sort of um, still conserve water off grid for a while. And then when you pull up somewhere at um, a caravan park to do all your washing and let the kids jump on the jumping pillow, uh, the missile can wash your hair for like four hours. I never do that. I'm pretty damn quick, <laughs> I must admit. Yeah. Even it, when we're in the house now, like I'm, I'm pretty good. Pretty good. But it will be nice having the instant hot water, I reckon. Just for the fact, you know when you've been out all day and you get home and you're like, everyone's just ready to have a shower and you're like, sorry guys, gotta wait 20 minutes to put the, um, we'll wait for the hot water to heat up. So that's gonna be really good. Yeah. To not have to wait. It is. All right, hold that for me. I think that might be it, I reckon. I probably um, can tell you a bit more, but I'll probably wait for you to send questions through and stuff and we can do a little bit more um, in detailed videos and sort of DIYs and tech vids and that for you along the way but yeah stoked with it eh? a little bit shorter than the last van 22 foot still we big like enough it, for the family yeah. a little bit smaller to tow and storage oh, i didn't tell you it is um uh the tear weight is like 3100 kilos and it's got a four ton atm so i got 900 kilos of payload which is heaps uh and you think you can take them up to 4.4 atm if you specify it in your build sheet happy days we're excited. We're um, heading to Stradbrook Island in a couple of weeks. So we've already done our shakedown trip, but a couple of weeks we've got Stratty and then we've got school holidays. We'll be going away. And then we head in June to July, big red June, bash. July, big red bash. So we'll spend the two weeks doing that. And that's always sort of got booked for now. It does. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Happy days. Comments, questions, feedback down below. Um, Thanks guys, hope you've had a cracker start to 2024. Yeah, kids are back at school, it's the best. Oh. <laughs>